Hey, this is Rob Unspock, and welcome back to another edition of eHeroes. Now, today, this is a first because we're going live to Arizona in the 130-degree heat. I'm going to interview Tamara Lenan, who goes by the name Tammy Girl. Her car broke down. This is going to be a great adventure, and this is going to be an awesome, awesome episode. Now, I've interviewed her before in the past. We talked about hashtags, but there is nothing that stops this fabulous, fabulous person from achieving everything she sets her, her mind to. So I want to introduce everybody to Tammy Girl, and uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I was trying to get home, and my car decided to overheat. So thanks for still entertaining me and my car under a tree in you know Arizona. So. <laughs> Well, you know, since, you since the last time we spoke, your hair is really coming in and it's, it's bluer and it's, it's, you're looking great. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's, it's been growing. My hair's been growing back. Um, I've been working out hard. Um, got a personal trainer. Just really, really, really focusing on, on my health uh, so that I can take full advantage of some of the pretty cool things, you know, I'm starting to do between now and 2023. And uh, just for the first time ever, like, actually got into a routine. Um, Amy Kiemeyer, who's a uh, you know, fellow speakeasy person with us, last year asked me to do a 5K a day for veterans with her virtually. And I hate cardio, um, but I did it because, you know, the team member needed me. And I'm proud to say since then, I have not missed a workout every single day. I just figured i got to keep going because if I quit doing it, I'll be 80 before I try to work out again. Yeah, you know, I, I, I've, I've watched your journey and, and, you know, it was like, when I first met you, I, I thought, boy, you know, she's getting just total chaos thrown at her. You know, everywhere she goes and no matter what she does, it's chaos. And, and you've come right out of that chaos going, you know what? You can't stop me, bitch. I'm just going to keep on going. And, and I, I just I'm, I'm I'm impressed because, you know, I, I just saw that you're in the lineup to speak at, at Haste and Hustle with Sir Richard Branson, with Steve Sims, with some of these people that you know i look up to and, and it's just incredible it's uh it, it surprises me and i'm i am actually you know like i was getting uh, a lot of feedback and people congratulating with me for speaking with richard branson and but i will tell you um the honor it is for me to actually share a stage with steve sims um for folks who kind of don't know my journey right steve is my mentor um i followed my podcast years and years ago um, that was a whole different place, a whole different person. I was kind of very negative and, you know, felt sorry for myself because of my health. And, you know, a lot of people allow me to play victim because circumstances sucked. And, um, but meeting Steve and seeing someone who was already successful in the skill sets that I had, right? I didn't know how to monetize the fact that I could sneak into any event, you know, regardless of security. Like, I can go anywhere. <laughs> and, um, and so meeting him and, and reading his book has really, really been a, a blessing. So I am really really honored to share a stage um with him um you know in in austin texas this uh this september kind of happened by accident um i was actually connected steve actually connected me with the hasten hustle folks because i do hashtag uh lead generations for events and things like that um and uh so i was really blessed We're just happened to connect really well with the hasten hustle team and you know then they asked me to, to speak and so I, I jumped all over that i'm really really nervous and uh but it's uh, I'm really blessed and honored to to be able to to share that stage with uh with some amazing people. But you know, there's one thing I think that differentiates you from a lot of other so-called entrepreneurs is that you find a way. If someone asks you to do something that you know will be huge for your career, you don't think about it. You don't say no. You say yes, and you make it happen. And and I I. I I know that's one thing that, that Steve Sims teaches a lot of people, or a lot of people go to his events and they walk away with nothing, you know? I, and I can count probably on, on, on two hands the amount of people that I've met at Steve Sims events that actually have done stuff with their life. And you're one of them. Well, I appreciate that very much. Um, Steve Sims is the first person who ever got me to actually pay to attend to an event, right? I, I, I'm really good at getting in where I want to go. Um, 
But I was really, really blessed to kind of just see that pivot, um, you know, in my own personal life. And I was just ready to kind of be a different person, you know, when I met him. Um, and the thing with the chaos, I got to be really careful with that, right? People can get super, super comfortable with dealing with BS all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Like I can jump hurdles like no other. Um, it's when you get your life to a place where there isn't chaos all the time and there aren't hurdles in front of you. Actually, my book is coming out in January, not to be used for navigation. It actually talks about the hurdle jumpers where, you know, we're great at chaos and we jump over all this craziness and then somebody removes the hurdle right on the track and then we fall on our friggin' face because right the the chaos is is you know where we're comfortable at and so this has actually been a very uncomfortable journey for me as um i get my you know my my life and kind of career in a more uh peaceful less hectic place if that makes sense and it really is super uncomfortable to be sitting there going why isn't anything going wrong today right like you almost (laughs) need it sometimes and so i i really try to be cognitive of, uh, you know, of that so that I don't create the chaos so I can be comfortable again, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, it's, there's been days where I don't want chaos in my life. I, you know, and I try to avoid it. And those days I get more chaos just dumped on me and it's like, okay. So when you start thinking about the negative, you're going to get the negative. So I, I stop thinking that way. If it comes to me, it comes to me. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm not thinking about it. <laughs> and, and it seems to work. That's what you have to do, right? You just be like, all right, well, I'll punch it in the throat if it comes over here, but I can't, you can't, you can't concentrate on it because it seems it's called, um, what do they call it? Self-fulfilling processes, right? Mm-hmm. We can kind of put out that energy and get the very thing we don't want because we're spending too much, like you said, too much time thinking about, you know, that, that we just call it right into us and we do it to ourselves most of the time. Yeah. Well, let's talk about hashtags because, you know, your, your hashtag is I am Tammy girl. And, uh, you know, there's, you know, hashtag has been around for a long, long time. And I know we talked about this, you know, in, in the, in the prior interview we did a long time ago, but it just seems like uh, only a few people are actually using hashtags anymore. Um, is there a reason? Yeah. Bad, really bad information. Right. A bunch of these fake gurus who had millions of flower followers on Instagram and stuff told people how to become viral using hashtags, you know, and, and people did that. It's just shit information. Um, hashtags have done an amazing in the music and event industry for a very long time. Um, I discovered it, believe it or not, because of Justin Bieber <laughs> and how, how they carry. True story. My daughter, I don't remember how old she was at the time came to me one day and we were in Washington state on a nuke base for the military. So we're pretty segregated, right? She wasn't out and about. This is like pre-internet days. And she's like, Hey, Justin Bieber is going to be um, in Las Vegas. Can I go? But don't worry. I can stay with my Vegas crew. Now I'm looking at my daughter going, where the hell did my 10 year old get a Vegas crew? What is going on here? And she was on Twitter and uh, Justin Bieber's fans use hashtags to find one another. Right. And so she had all these friends and stuff and and they would do, you know, meet and greets and, and things like that using the hashtag for the city. And so that's how I I learned about it. And so when I was blessed, when I started working with um, with uh, Les Brown Jr. and Les Brown doing their events, I was like, how do I can do with hashtags um, for this? Um, and, and it worked. It, done, it did great. Right. Finding out who's we, we could go in ahead of time with the hashtags, find out who's attending the event what other events might be in the area the same weekend we're there. How can we leverage that, right? We would come in early and use hashtags to um, do a pop-up event the night before a big event and get people into the little event and drive them back over to the big one. And so um, it just it just worked. And I didn't realize, because I was so far into the event world, the music industry, where they're standard to be able to find your peeps, right, through hashtags, that I didn't know everybody else was using this shit wrong. Right. Um, the last thing you want is a viral hashtag. Um, people who pay attention to viral things are not loyal. And, and so if you're using these viral hashtags, you get seen. Your post only lasts a few seconds and you're trying to get hold of an audience who doesn't give a shit about what you're doing. They want they want shiny things. Mm-hmm. And um, and so it's been really, really hard educating people um, 
on how hashtags actually will work if you register them and use them properly and and, and all that. It's really been a big, big battle I've been fighting, you know, trying to get people to understand that they have they have learned it all wrong. Um, and as far as lead generation, right now, hashtags is the only thing that are, like, in real time. Um, right? I literally could go to Facebook, and I do this all the time. Um, you know, I, I do hashtag real estate podcast, for example. Right? And real estate podcasts will pop up. And we're able to research and look at that podcast and determine if it's a podcast maybe we want to put one of our clients on or something. Um, and it's in real time. And so we can go back an hour later, do that exact same hashtag search, and get a whole new list of, um, of podcasts. And to this date, knock on wood, I have yet to get to the point um, where if we do a hashtag search, we start getting the same answer every time. You know, if you can go to Google, and if you Google real estate podcasts, Eventually, you're going to get the same answer or the same podcast over and over and over again in your face. That's, that doesn't happen with hashtags because they're in real time. So, mm-hmm. you know, whatever platform you're using, you're getting that up-to-date information of people who are using that hashtag in the moment, which tells you they're current, right? They're credible. They're on top. Um, and it's just a really good way to uh, do research. And we have also found um, we're actually recording it now. Um, we're recording the case study of, you know, where we would buy leads for event sponsors and things off of Fiverr and that sort of thing, right, versus the hashtag leads that we're contacting, right, that they're very specific, that are, that are closing sales and things like that. And so if, if folks could just realize that they realize nothing else, hashtags are real time, real time hot leads. Somebody's using that hashtag. They're already interested in what you're doing, right? It's, it's, it's more of a warm um, lead and you can go in there and connect with them. I mean, we don't try to sell to everybody we meet, but we go in and we create those relationships with the podcast people, um, or, you know, Chamber of Commerce and other, like in Austin, we're looking for sponsors, right? And so I've connected with Oracle and a few other places, um, from, you know, using hashtags like Sir Richard Branson and then Austin, Texas. And you see who says nice things about Richard Branson and how excited they are. And boom, let them know that we're going to be in town. And so if people could just get past um, you know, the fact that they've been lied to, forget everything you know about hashtags and realize they're they're in real time and they're the most, the best, in my opinion, organic leads that you can get right now. You do not need a friggin' dime to, you know, generate hashtag leads for your business. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times I'll click on a, a hashtag just to see what my competitors are doing. And, uh, you know, some of them are really awful with their marketing but they're on point with their hashtags. Yeah, that's the thing too. You also gotta be careful. Um, I don't know why people want to use these viral hashtags and stuff because, like you said, I look at their product. You know, they're they're not able to scale, right? Like they they want us to do this big hashtag strategy for them, and I'm like, what the hell are you gonna do? You get 300 customers tomorrow? Like no, like we have stopped doing hashtag standalones for most entrepreneurs unless they're working with a credible business coach or media company because the last thing i want to do is drive a bunch of uh leads to an entrepreneur that will just make those leads never use them again right like you don't do it don't don't do it um so if they can't handle uh scalability you know, and things like that. We just we just won't work with them anymore. And we've we've learned that the hard way, right? From working with small entrepreneurs who didn't listen to us after we registered their hashtags and did all those things, right? Um, and then you know their crappy message took off, and you know it really did their their brand more harm than good. Yeah, one Scale of the things. Really one of the things that impresses me though is is that you like to share out banned uh, hashtags. And, and, you know, I don't, I don't think there's any other person out there that does that. That's important, right? If you don't know, like, it is sometimes it's silly stuff. Like, a Valentine's Day has, like, six banned hashtags, right? Um, you're, you're just harming your brand. And, and if you're paying for an ad or doing something, and you don't realize that the hashtag you're using means that nobody will ever see that post ever uh, you're not really doing your your company any good right and so it's really really important for people to understand a few things about banned hashtags one just because they're banned today won't mean that they're not banned tomorrow um social media really usually bans a hashtag to a stop so many freaking people from using it or b some group tries to take over a hashtag for some illicit 
breathe it, right? That isn't necessarily the the scope of that. Um, and uh, and the other one is they just don't want, you know, they don't want 900 million people using hashtag Valentine's Day or whatever, which is one of the ones that gets banned every year. Um, and so it's really, really important to understand if you're really going to understand your marketing and your media and your, your reach, organic reach and, and all that, um, you need to understand there are banned hashtags right now, unless you have AI technology like my team does. We, we um, got the AI. And so we actually are able to hook our client social media right to our AI tool and it will automatically pull out banned hashtags for them so we don't have to deal with it. But right now, the other, only other way to find out if a hashtag is banned is to go to the social media platform, put the hashtag in the search button. If a bunch of posts pop up, it's not banned. Or if it pops up and says there's no information for this hashtag or whatever right now, boom, it's banned. And it's really and it's manual. And most entrepreneurs don't have the time um, to do that. And it's very painstaking. painstaking. And, uh, you know, a lot. Of, I've been an entrepreneur who couldn't afford to pay for help before. And so if I can get at least, you know, every couple months I put out the, the list of banned hashtags in the hopes that people will you know, take a look at it and, and, and not use them and it'll help, you know, it'll help, help their bread in some way. Um, if they don't have access to the AI tool like we have, or they don't have the time to, to literally go search every single hashtag, you almost, that's almost what you have to do. You almost have to run every hashtag for every post, every time you do it, because just because the hashtag is not banned today, doesn't mean it won't be tomorrow. And doesn't mean that their hashtag is banned today. won't be unbanned tomorrow. Once it settles down, it's, it's really it's a kind of weird system they're using. Um, and what I tell people is a good, good rule of thumb is if, if the hashtag is banned on any of the platforms, whether it be Facebook or LinkedIn, where even if it's banned on just one of those platforms, don't use it on any of them. Uh, Google's not going to like that. Um, if you're getting, you know, blocked on, if, on Facebook, you know, that will bleed over to Instagram now because they have hashtag crossover. And so, you know, just, just, because the people are like, well, will it work on Facebook? Is it banned here? Is it banned there? Good rule of thumb. If it's banned, just don't use it anyplace. Yeah, I, you know, I, I rarely ever search hashtags on Facebook. I go right to Google, and Google will find it on LinkedIn. They'll find it on here. They'll find it on there. Um, but, you know, to be honest, I, I even stopped using Instagram. And, and, and it was just because people were using 30, 40, 50 hashtags. And it was like, all you're doing is spamming the system. I, and it just, when I look at it, all I see is, you know, junk. <laughs> it's like, why don't you well, put out some quality content? Well, ha well, quality content is important, but here's the thing too. You got to realize hashtags are SEO keywords that people can see, right? So if you go in to do a, a marketing post and you, you know, use seven or eight keywords, right, for, for, for your marketing, Right, people don't call that spam. It's called SEO, and it, it's mm -hmm. it's targeting. So the reason a lot of people think that the thirty hashtags is spam is because they can see them, but mm -hmm. it's just it's just SEO that you can see. Right mm -hmm. now, if if they're using hashtags that aren't relevant to that post, that that's a real problem. It's spam. Yeah. They will get banned for that. Right now, the um so the the hashtag rules have changed a lot on social media in the last year and even the last few months. So we're always always checking every day. And um, so so now if you're using hashtags, for example, I don't know, let's say we got pet bones or something for our pets for sale, right? And then we put hashtag cat or whatever. Social media is going to start seeing that. They're going to consider that spam, and then they're going to pull that ad. Um, so you really need to. You know, for proper hashtag use, know who your audience is, you know, what problem you solve for them, all that stuff before you start using them. Because social media is getting really serious on how hashtags are perceived. In fact, Google is starting to use hashtags to index the Internet. Mm -hmm. I actually did a post in our Speakeasy group a few months ago where um, we did a search with Steve Sims' hashtags. And we actually showed, we took a screenshot of in the URL now where Google had you put his hashtag in a URL um, for, for what they're doing it. So hashtags right now are kind of like the, um, the Dewey Decimal System um, of the Internet. And, and I didn't come up with that cool uh, saying, by the way, my friend Dave Beaker did. It really made sense. Um, and so using proper yeah. hashtags, reg registering your branded hashtags and knowing what you're doing is going to be more important than ever. 
because Google is using them to index credibility on the internet, and it really could make or break your, your your brand. You know, people need to start taking this seriously. Yeah, and and the Dewey Decimal System it really makes us feel old. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm only 43, and then half these kids are gonna have to like Google what we're talking about. <laughs> I, I haven't heard the Dewey Decimal System since I was in high, or probably elementary school, because by the time I got to high school, I don't even think I went to the library. <laughs> no, I hear you there. Well, I think too, there's different times, right? You had talked about, you know, I'm relentless and I don't give up kind of thing, but we grew up in a different time, right? My parents weren't going to solve anything for us, right? We had to go to the library. We had to get the encyclopedias. We had MacGyver and A team on TV, right? Like we were raised to figure shit out, right? Um, and 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 so, and then when you're dyslexic, back in a time where they don't test for it, I was they just thought I was couldn't read and was dumb, right? Um, you you have to learn to function because nobody's coming to bail your ass out. Um, and so I really do also think it's a product of 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 you know the times that that we came from, and I was raised in a small town, twelve hundred people. And, you know, at the end of the day, if I wanted to get something done, I had to figure out how to do it. And nobody was coming to, to solve that problem for me. And, uh, mm-hmm. and so I think it's just, it, I think it's more of a, you know, background issue than it is that, you know, I'm not necessarily any better than anybody else. And being persistent, or just really didn't have, have a choice most of my life. You had, you had to figure it out. Nobody was coming to save your ass. Yeah. So what's with the blue hair? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, he's sins his fault. So, it's it's always Steve's fault. Dude, dude, you have no idea. As much as I look up to him, he is also like his name gives me heartburn sometimes. In fact, we we were I just just giving him shit via a messenger a few minutes ago, and he said something obnoxious, and I was like, objection. He's like overruled. I'm like, who 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 made you judge Steve, right? But um, he um, so when COVID hit, I didn't have a website or anything. I was doing tour logistics. All my clients, I shook their hand. I met them at an event somewhere out on the road, right? Like, I didn't really need to be on the internet all that much. When COVID hit, and I had no website or anything. I was in the middle of all my reconstructive jaw surgeries, right? So I had no teeth, and, you know, I kept having jaw surgeries and stuff. So we just couldn't get a photographer, right, to get some good photos and, and things like that. And so Steve's like, hey, w- w- would you mind? I don't want to offend you, but... I- Let's make an avatar. Send me some photos of your favorite photos of you, and let's create an avatar for your website until you're healthier, you know, we can get real photos. I'm like, all right, we'll give it a try. And so um, I had sent him a headshot that I had taken the year before that where my hair was blue. It had been, the you know, the photographer had edited it that way. My hair wasn't actually blue, but it was a really cool picture. Um, and the result was the avatar, Tammy Girl, that people see now um, is freaking absolutely amazing. Um but what was happening was people were then were seeing the avatar. They loved it. And they were asking me to come on a podcast or come to speak. And I would show up and they'd be like, your hair's not blue. Right. Like they just really expected that to, to, to do that. And so I was like, all right. So I dyed my hair blue. Um, and it, it, I haven't looked back. And it's done really, really well with my brand. I've, I've had a couple of marketing people that I've had to kind of put in their place where they go online and say never use the avatar as a profile photo because you show up and nobody knows what you really look like and it's a detriment to your brand. I was like, no, you're teaching the wrong thing here. A shitty avatar is detrimental to your brand. But nobody can see my avatar and then meet me and have any question <laughs> that they have, they're they not meeting me, right? And so I really do think um, I love the fact that, you know, I'm – I am silly and, you know, one of my businesses is proper shenanigans. And so it was just a lot of fun. And, but again, I can't take any credit for that. It's just, we, we did it to overcome a uh, health obstacle at the time. And it, you know, and, 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 and for 15 bucks, the best damn thing we could have ever done for my brand. And now I actually had to go back and buy the commercial rights and, and all that it's being trademarked right now. Um, we, uh, the Tammy Gar girl cartoon, as long as all goes well, well, actually be at comic-con london next year um because i have a mental health series of books that she'll be in and stuff and so it's, it's really been exciting and it's opened a lot of weird doors that i never would have thought to have knocked on to be quite honest you know but uh you know your health looks like it's improving your you know your your you looks like you just have more energy and 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 um yeah you know I, i'm just impressed i appreciate that what I, I, 
it goes a long way when you really start to like who you are as a person and, and you're doing stuff that you love to do, right? I, I had my whole life been told I could never be an author or, right, you know, speaking at events will never get you anywhere. Being a smart ass will never get you anywhere. I'm like, ooh, must make me a millionaire is what it's going to do. But, um, <laughs> and so, um, I just, I'm, I'm just, I'm doing what I love. I'm figuring it out. And I was in that weird space as an entrepreneur where I can't, you know, I can't just go, well, Tamara does marketing or Tamara does podcast booking or she does this. My skill set pretty flexible in that I do whatever I need to do at the time to get to where I want to go. Because at the end of the day, everything I do is for suicide prevention and getting that mental health aspect out there and talked about and action taken with it. And um, I think this relationship with the Haste and Hustle team has been absolutely amazing. And we've kind of, you know, I have fallen into my niche of, you know, we're doing the events, we're raising money for mental health. Um, and I will be doing several, several more events with the Haste and Hustle team here coming up. Um, and uh, I'll probably end up in Canada for about six months for it. And so I'm just, I'm having a great time. I'm really blessed and honored um, meeting some amazing people. Um, well, a lot of folks don't know, right? Is I'm, it's, I don't really care about celebrities. They're usually paying the ass to work with. I've worked with way too many. Um, most of them need throat punch. Um, but the amazing people that you've never heard of, you know, who are the real business people, the real entrepreneurs, they're the ones really closing million dollar, billion dollar deals, getting to meet those people behind the scenes, um, out on the road is an education nobody can pay for. I mean, sure, you could hire a great business coach and we all do that and should, but, um, what I have found is things that people do well naturally, they don't think to teach you, mm -hmm. right? And so when you get to watch them and see that natural skill set of selling or, you know, or, or whatever they're doing, you know, you get to witness that. And it's, it's like, that just excites the hell out of me. I, it's, it's just an education you can't get anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and for me, it was, it was always about building my personality as my brand because everybody knew that I was sarcastic, but I withheld a lot of that sarcasm from a lot of my, my uh, initial books. And then I started hitting people with the Rob versus books and they're like, Oh, this is so funny, you know, and, and they would just crack up. I, then they were like, I want to hire you. I want to be. And so for me, it was, hey, why not get that sarcasm out there, you know, full frontal and, and, and let people just experience it how they want. And, you know, our, sarc our sarcasm is sadly becoming a lost art form that we need to bring back. <laughs> um, and um, well, that's the thing, too. I think, you know, the, the biggest thing that Steve Sims has done for me is, um, you all met me, right? I curse. I, I'm I'm rough around the edges. I'm a female, but I fight like a man, right? Like I just got a whole different type of thing. And when I first started in this industry, I was constantly criticized. I wasn't dressed nice enough. You can't talk like that. Like really, they just made me feel like an enigma because it was LA and Hollywood. And, and uh, you know, I damn near ran from this industry screaming um, because I just constantly felt not good enough or I wasn't in the right space. And Steve Sims is the first person who just kind of got the hell out of my way and let me be me um, and then show me how, you know, much better that is for my skill set, right? And mm -hmm. and now that I'm proving myself, you know, people don't say shit about the way I look anymore, right? Like, they don't care I'm not in high heels on stage or whatever, you know, I roll in as I am. Because I really cuss like that all the time, right? Like, that's just who I am. I really, and um, it was, so, you know, trying to be the person you're not really is soul sucking um and, and it really i think added a lot to some of my poor health i was already in poor health but when you feel criticized and you hate what you're doing and you feel not good enough man that that that'll that'll bring you down quick as well right mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the space that i was in when i you know when i met steve um you know and and i was grateful because at the time my podcast literally was like two weeks old um <clears throat> and i had heard his book my friend uh, played the audible book for me. She's like, this dude is you. You got to listen to this book. And uh, so we listened to it. I was like, oh, I got to get him on my podcast. And I was like, at this time, though, a lot of people turned down my podcast because it was brand new. And uh, I was like, he'll never come on. And she's like, oh, no, he's a self-proclaimed podcast whore. She's like, email him. And sure, <laughs> sure, I emailed him. And I told him, I'm like, listen, I got three viewers. Two of them were my dogs. So I, I would love to have a conversation with you. Um, and he came on. And it's funny because that, that, Still live, you can see that 
very first interview where he says, all right, let's give maximum impact to your three viewers, right? Like, and it was just really cool that he did that. And um, we kind of stayed in touch, you know, after that. Um, and when the hashtag registration started picking up and I saw the industry changing, um, you know, one day I messaged him, I'm like, Boop, here's all your hashtag registrations. You're going to need them. And I just did it and gave them to him because I knew trying to explain to him the importance of hashtags when he really didn't know me that all that well and all that just wasn't going to go down. He was, you know, he wasn't going to take me seriously. And so I just did it and sent it to him. Um, and then, you know, a year later when it blew up the way that it did, you know, it was, he was grateful for that. And, you know, we you know had a relationship the whole time and then I joined the speakeasy and got him as my coach and all that. Um, but, uh, he, uh, he was great. He was a pain in the ass to work with, right? Like, he was around every freaking corner. Um, he helped me learn how to write press releases. Um, and, I mean, just, like, I was back in high school. Rewrite it, rewrite it, rewrite it. Um, but I'm really, really appreciative of him, you know, kind of getting me out of my comfort zone and, and forcing me to, to be okay with who I am and how I show up. And and if, if you're truly solving a problem for somebody, they don't give a shit if you roll up on a hoverboard. You know, you're there to solve their problem. They don't care what you look like. Um, which was the first time anybody in this industry shared that message with me before. It was always I wasn't good looking enough or whatever, you know, and he was the first one that was like, I ain't gonna give a shit how you show up if you solve their problem. Like no other coach was teaching that. Right. Yeah. It, it's it's huge. But you know, you have people out there that will criticize you at every move. They'll they'll make fun of you. They'll talk bad about you. And the moment you solve their problem, you become the hero. And uh, you know they don't talk bad about you anymore. Yeah, that's true. Um, I've learned. I think the biggest lessons, one of the biggest lessons I've learned, and something my grandmother used to say all the time, was what other people think of you is none of your business. <laughs> And, um, you know, just be like, you know, uh, not to not get too concerned about what people are saying about you, um, you know, and, and, and all that. And so I, I try to ad adopt that, you know, here recently as well. Because trust me, plenty of people got shit to say about my pierced eyebrow and, and my blue hair. Trust me um, as well, right? Yeah, I was going to say something, but I decided not to. <laughs> <laughs> but and here's the funny part. My eyebrows have been pierced since I was 24. And, like, nobody noticed. It, and so I dyed my hair blue. <laughs> I'm like, I've always had it. Um, I used to have my tongue one done too, but all the jaw surgeries and stuff, um, they took it out and I didn't want to put it back in and break my implants and all that. But, um, but I've, I've always been this person and, um, you know, to be able to just be who I am and out there doing what I love. And, and, um, I love fourth quarter Hail Marys, man. I am that I, I will tell you, I, there's a lot of people who will give up because, well, it's two weeks out from this event and we don't have this amount of sponsors yet or we don't have the hotels or, or whatever. I will tell you, the amount of times I've gotten onto a plane with a plane ticket with I don't know where the hell I'm staying when I land to, to go to an event or do something are far, far too many. Um, but it worked out every time. There were times I literally was walking onto the plane and I picked up a client and then I had the money I needed as I was walking on the plane when the other people who were supposed to go with me canceled because you know, they were uncomfortable or they didn't have it figured out soon enough. Um, and so I, I know I, it's almost like a drug to me. I love those fourth, fourth quarter Hail Marys, right? Cause you know, even if there's only two seconds left on the clock, you got two seconds left on the clock, use them, use them, like play mm -hmm. it out. A lot of entrepreneurs don't play out the clock. No, no. And, and, and some of them will bail a month before thinking they have, they don't have time. And, uh, Yep. You know, it, it just, it, use the time that's available, you know. Yeah, use the opportunity that's available, um, you know, and, I, and I'll tell you, I, I'm really, really blessed. I never yet have I had a sleep on a sidewalk anywhere, even though I've gotten onto a plane with nothing but a one-way ticket and uh, here's here's the event I'm going to go stock, you know. Um, some of this always, has always worked out. Um, well, you know, you know just... and I guess there's... Just take this in, you know, the, the situation right now. You're in your car, it broke down. You knew that you got to be on this podcast. You turned on your phone. You made it happen. I've had so many people contact me and say, Rob, I know I'm scheduled, but my car broke down. Let's reschedule. Oh, my God. Listen, and then I, then I, I never hear from them. If I rescheduled shit, Aaron Todd, if something went sideways in my life, I would never do anything. I would yeah. never, I would never be anywhere 
Um, you know, and that, that's, that's a big thing too. Like when we first came out with the podcast, um, you know, it really was life is hectic and you have got to figure out how to still pursue your dreams and run towards what you want around all the bullshit trying to, trying to trip you up. Um, now you, you, folks are meeting me now, you know, two years ago, I would have been a little bit more frazzled, but now I'm just like, all right, like I kind of feel sorry for Satan or the universe some days. So I'm like, really, this is the best you got today. Like, <laughs> um, so for me, it's simple. I pulled in under a tree. I got a bottle of water. I'm chilling here while my car cools down. Um, now I'll be on my way. And, um, you can't, you can't, you have to, you have got to, got to, regardless of what's going on, not let somebody trip up your schedule. Um, cause like I said, with my health, I had some deaths in the families recently and just, you know, life happening. Um, if I, if I canceled stuff every time something crazy happens, nobody would know who the hell I am. I, I wouldn't have done anything yet. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Cause I think that's what makes you part of the 1% because you know, the other 99% complain or they, they don't like the situation. And, uh, you're, you're, you're the type of person that will take the situation and, and, uh, use it to your advantage. Kind of leverage the resources, um, at the level you're at. Uh, a lot of people take for granted. You gotta understand, I've been kind of leveraging stuff since I was a, a young kid. Um, when I was younger, they always brought major country music artists to our fairgrounds, the King County Fair. Um, and, and, you know, my dad was a single dad raising all those kids after my mom, you know, passed away and everything. He didn't have a lot of money. He was working at a factory, right? And uh, so we really couldn't afford for us to do these things, right? And so instead of going, I can't go to the fair because my dad can't afford it. My best friend and I, we went down there and we volunteered. We set up chairs and we were ushers at those concerts so we could watch it, right? And then um, I, I got to be, you know, I've met Mark Chestnut before he was huge, Garth Brooks, like this, yeah, Charlie Pride, like just met some amazing people and got to see how uh, how life backstage kind of works and how, you know, there might be a singer that I didn't necessarily like as much as another one, but they were humble and down to earth. And then there was another singer who I thought was amazing who was just a jackass, right? And so um, my entire life, I had been figuring out how to do the things that I want to do that I didn't have the money to do. Mm-hmm. Which is how I started going to major events, right? Like I had four grand to go to Tony Robbins events and do those things, but I try to, uh, you know, provide value. And I always figure it out. I, I create a relationship, and then I would show up, and I would bring four people with me. I'll, I'll bring you, I'll bring volunteers with me, and I and I, I would do that for a long time. Um, and that allowed me because I knew if I could just get into the building and get near the people I wanted to connect with, I, you know, I it would work out from there. And and, and so I've, my entire life has been how do I get into that building I want to get into so I can have this experience to move on to the next thing. Right. Um, so if I would have waited until I had enough money to do a lot of these things, like even hiring Steve Sims, it still wouldn't have done it. Right. Yeah. Like um, it was just a matter of, and what I have found too, um, and I'm sure there's some whole psychology behind this that I don't get is um, when I first was going from being a negative person and, and doing stuff, seeing opportunity was really hard. Like, like I just had to go above and beyond. So I had to get really intentional with, I'm going to be positive. I'm going to try to look for the opportunity here and, and, and do it that way. And then over time, I noticed that my brain now is seeing opportunity a lot faster on its own. It's becoming more of a, um, reflex than it was before. And and so folks seem to realize that you know, you can change your mindset. You can get to the point where you see opportunity other people don't. But you've got to put in the hard work to reprogram your brain to be able to do that. Um, and it was just something I noticed over time that I had to put less and less effort into seeing, you know, the loophole in the situation that I could that I could leverage for what I wanted. Um, but at first, it was really, really hard, and, and, and I didn't see a lot of hope and things like that. But... Uh, now, now, you know, it's, it's kind of cool because come up with some pretty crazy shit. Um, some of it works and some of it doesn't, but we keep on going and, and you know, and go from there. I think that's another reason why I just love Steve Simmons. No client wants to hear this. The amount of times I have called that man and said, listen, we got a new hashtag strategy or whatever. One of two things could happen. Like, we can really do this. It'll go well. Or you're going to lose your entire LinkedIn. <laughs> and he was like, 
download the data. So we download the data and we would go and do it. And thank God, knock on wood, we never lost his stuff. But um, so he, just the fact that he entertains that craziness as much as he does shows on how unstable he is really at the end of the day. But um, <laughs> it's been great. So he, he, he's, he's allowed he's allowed us to make those mistakes, right, and figure stuff out and, and, and work the bugs out. Um. Because I mean, especially with hashtags, it's, it's ever changing, right? Like we don't know, and a lot of times we don't know about a change until we're like, oh, well, that didn't work. What happened? Kind of thing, right? Um, and so, yeah, I've been really, really blessed that you know to, to be around people who just like, all right, we'll just sit back and let her do it, what she's got to do, right? I, I'm a, you know, kind of get going to get good kind of person. Like I'm a practitioner. I can't read a book and figure out how to do something, right? I always get crappy, and um, you know classes but you know you get me one of the surgical tech you get me out in the field doing things um you know that, that's where my superpower comes in because I'll, I'll you know i'll figure it out kind of like the guy first so <laughs> so how do people get a hold of you where do they go do you have a website i am everywhere so actually the best way to get a hold of me because they're rebuilding the site now is uh my handle is at i am tammy t-a-m-i girl at i am tammy girl Every social media platform, if you put that to Google, you, you can't not find me. Um, and folks can message me um, on any of the social media sites, um, you know, or anything like that. I'm, I'm a pretty hard. So, like I said, you got you got to try not to find me. Um, I'm out there. I've been pr- pr- pretty blessed with that. So, yeah, my handle is um, at I am, you know, Tammy Girl. And um, we're looking for uh, – we're – I took a year off of the podcast and we're relaunching um, after disruption podcast and magazine. So any girl looking for great entrepreneurs who want to be featured, um, come on the podcast. We don't charge, you know, or anything for that. And, you know, kind of get that going again now that we're going to be out on the road and, and, and all that. So, uh, you know, folks want to come now. You can't be boring, right? It's called active disruption. Right? You don't be coming on my podcast with some boring bullshit. Um, but if you, if you're doing something exciting and you're disrupting, you know, the industry, we want to meet you. There you go. Summed it all up. No boring bullshit. You can't do that with Tammy Girl. <laughs> bad things happen, dude. Bad things happen when I'm bored. I'm telling you, a lifetime of experience and 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 barely escaping felonies has taught me that I can't be bored. <laughs> so find her at uh, hashtag I am Tammy Girl, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Adios. <laughs>